Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about image processing in C Sharp. And we're going to talk about some of the basic concepts around how are images uh, represented inside your computer. If you take a photograph and you load it into your computer, how does the uh, computer represent that internally? You need to understand that if you're going to write code to manipulate images. And we're going to talk about things like RGB and alpha and transparency and how images are configured and what the components of images are. And then in part two, we're going to take that knowledge and we're going to write some C-sharp code that will allow us to manipulate images and process them and change them. And we're going to use a fairly advanced concept called lock bits that allows you to do very, very fast image manipulation. So um, first I want to start out with discussing really what is an image. Here we've got a beautiful photograph, lots of colors, high resolution photograph, um, lots of gradual in, uh, colors and very bright colors. How is that continuous beautiful image represented in your computer which only understands ones and zeros? Well, to understand that, I've got this image and I've opened it in, in Photoshop. Now you can use GIMP, which is a freely available image processing application, but I'm using Photoshop here and I wanna use this to understand exactly what, how is this image composed in the computer? Now, the first thing I wanna do is I want to zoom in to a particular area of this image so we can see what's going on here. So I'm going to zoom into this hot air balloon and I'm going to get in closer and closer and zoom in closer and closer. And you start to see, hey, wait a minute. What used to be a gradual change in colors is now a very blocky, um, sharp edges, and it's not high resolution anymore. It's a bunch of blocks. And uh, you can start to see that your image in the computer is comprised of a bunch of blocks. And these blocks are called picture elements, or in short, they're called pixels, picture elements or pixels. And you'll look, if you look at each pixel, you see, hey, wait a minute, each block or each pixel has one color. Okay, this is a red, and then over here, this is a blue, and this is a darker blue, and this is a yellowish orangey. So it's not a gradual uh, change in color. These are blocks of color. So now you start to say, hey, wait a minute. My beautiful image is actually a bunch of blocks in the computer and each block has one color. So now you can start to see, hey, wait a minute. This is kind of like an array of colors inside the computer. And, and that's exactly what it is. Um, it's a bunch of bits and blocks, and you can also call it a bitmap, a map of bits. And that's another term you use for a, an image, is a bitmap. It's a bunch of bits arranged in a map, kind of like an array. So now we're starting to say, oh, okay, I can have an array, and it's comprised of blocks, and each block has one color. So the next question, how do I describe all these varied colors? You got thousands of different colors here, different ranges of color. How do I describe each of these different colors to the computer? Well, there is a scientific fact that is very interesting. And it, is, it says that basically any color in the spectrum, any color you can imagine, is actually comprised of three primary colors and these primary colors are red pure red pure green and pure blue okay so any pixel here any block is actually comprised of various amounts of red plus green plus blue now if you don't believe that what i'm going to do is i'm going to take what's called a color picker here and it looks like a little eyedropper and up in the right hand corner, I've got these RGB or red, green, blue sliders. And there's a text field that shows a value. 
So what I can do is I can go to any pixel in this image and it will tell me how much red, how much green, and how much blue is there. Okay, so let's go to one of these dark blue pixels, click on it, and it has six red, five green, and 185 blue. So as expected, it's got a lot of blue, but very little green or red. So let's go over to a red pixel right here, click on it, and it's got 185 red, six green, and zero blue. So let's go over to this orangish yellow, click on it, it's got 235 red, 107 green, and 20 blue. So you can go all around this image, any pixel you want, click on it, and it will say for this one, 255, 143, 138. So now we know that we've got an array of blocks or elements, and each is described by red, green, and blue components, three values, and any pixel can be described by those three values. Ah, okay, so now we're starting to understand how we can represent it in a computer. So now we saw that these have got these numbers here. How do you get these numbers 255, 143, and 138, or whatever they are. Well, it turns out many images, not all, but in general, we have found that images can be represented by 256 values for each of the red, green, and blue components. Okay, so if I have 256 possible reds and 256 possible greens and 256 possible blues, I can describe just about any color. I mean, you could get, you can use more than those, but in general, people use uh, what are called 8-bit values. And why do they call them 8-bit? Because 2 to the 8th is 256, okay? So if I use 8 bits for my red channel and 8 bits for my green channel and 8 bits for my blue, that will give me 256 values in each channel. Ah, okay, so now I've got an array of elements or pixels, and each pixel has three 8-bit numbers in it. Okay, it's got a red component, a green component, and a blue component. So I've got 8 plus 8 plus 8, which is 24 bits. So I've got 24 bits total per pixel to describe this image of all these pixels. So this is also, you'll hear it described as a 24-bit per pixel image, okay? So now we're starting to see that how we can define this in a computer. This beautiful image is a whole bunch of pixels with 24 bits of color in each pixel. Now, how many pixels are in this image? Well, we can go down here and you can see the width in the left bottom left hand corner the width is 1920 pixels wide and 1200 pixels high so this width is 1920 pixels and 1200 pixels high so if we go to our calculator and we multiply 1920 times 1200 that tells us that in this image there are 2.3 million pixels, okay? So 2.3 million pixels, 24 bits of information for each pixel, that tells us how much memory is going to be used uh, to describe this, this array, this bitmap of information. Okay, now there is one other bit of information aside from the color of these pixels that, that you can describe to use in your image processing. And that is transparency, okay? Now I'm gonna add a semi-transparent image here, whoops. And it's an airplane. And it's in the foreground of this image. And actually this is a rectangular image described by these squares but some of the pixels in this image are transparent. What does that mean? Well, this image has an additional eight bits of information, aside from the 24-bit color uh, information we described. It's got an additional eight bits that describe how each pixel, how transparent it is, okay? 
So if I put it on top of the hot air balloon and I go back and I zoom in, the pixels here in this airplane image are described by that additional 8 bits of alpha as being transparent. So what that means is that the computer can do some math on each of these pixels using that information and say, okay, how much of the background should show through and how much of the foreground? In this case, the foreground is 100% because it's, uh, it's opaque. And here the pixel allows the background. So there's just a math operation, a ones and zeros math operation done in the computer to say for these pixels show the background, not the foreground, not the airplane image, okay? So you might get also a 32-bit per pixel image, which says there's an additional eight bits of information describing the transparency. And that transparency is just a way for the computer to multiply foreground and background pixels and decide which one shows up, the background or the foreground, okay? So now we have a fairly good idea of uh, how this, these images are laid out in the computer as pixels with 24 or 32 bits per pixel to describe the color and the uh, transparency. Okay, so now that we know that, we can summarize and say each pixel has 24 bits per pixel of color. And of course that can change with different types of images, but in general, you can expect something like that, 8 bits red, 8 bits green, 8 bits blue. And it may also have an additional eight bits of transparency or alpha. And this image can be described as a bitmap because it's a map of bits. And the types of images, uh, these are just the names you can see of some images. A common one is JPEG. And that is, that is a 24-bit image. JPEGs don't have alpha associated with them. And then you can get bitmap, BMP, or PNG, or TIFF, or others. And some of those have the additional 32 bits per pixel. Okay, so now that we have a, a decent idea of how images are, are laid out in a computer, we can now go in and start looking at how we would uh, implement that in C code in our application. And this is kind of an extension of our previous videos in which we talked about events and delegates and also threading, where we used one application that was the design of the application was this, and it basically opened up an image, uh, stored it as a bitmap in a bitmap class, and then fed that to another class that modified the pixels in that image and sent out uh, the completed image as an argument to an event. So you, you probably want to go through and look at those uh, videos to see how these are laid out. We're going to use this exact same application. And in part two, we're going to take this image manipulation where we actually modify each pixel and we're going to introduce a much, much faster way of modifying the pixels so it's almost instantaneous. Uh, in the previous examples, we did a very slow method to show how, how we could uh, implement threading. But in this one, we're going to show a fast method um, to get this all done very quickly. Okay, so I hope that helped you understand images a bit better and uh, hope to see you in part two where we get into the actual coding.